how's everyone doing today? I can see a few people already in chat. Uh, I can see Anarchy and Pingu. Hey guys, good evening. Uh, can also see Darth, what's his face? Uh, Sauron, uh, Luna Twix, and hopefully a few others in the background as well. Uh, you have to let me know, guys, if you can hear me. <laughs> as always with the uh, with the settings, because Brian and I share now. Um, my settings are very different to his because we share the same equipment, but we have different room setups and things like that. So if the audio is out, just let me know and I'll, uh, I'll tweak it before we make a start. Uh, we've also got Tronix as well. Hey man, good to see you. Uh, and Met Advice Guy as well. Good evening to you, sir. Doff my cap to you. Let's see how we, uh, we get on today. We've got a few things we're going to do today. I'm going to build the 60XT prototype from Pingu, who's in the chat. Uh, this is his lovely PCB. This is his plate, and this is the case underneath as well. We're also going to have a look at the uh, Ocelot. Uh, so this isn't built yet, it's just got the switches in it. This is the uh, trap here. Ocelot, there you go. Which is another little bit of kit. Look at that weight. Hold on. There we go. I'm getting the right bit around for you guys. Absolutely love this thing. Um, so we're going to build this as well. Um, I'll show you guys the PCB. We'll come back to it later on as well, but I'll show you this now. Uh, just look how beautiful this thing is. Look at that design. Wilbur and uh, Elaine have done a fantastic job on this. There we go. So we're going to come back to that later on, and we'll do that second uh, after we've uh, built the 60 XT. Just going to give it a few minutes before we start to make sure that everyone joins because the bot pings. Uh, Luna Twix says it looks lovely. The Ocelot looks amazing and it's so hefty. It's like a brick. It feels like a brick. It's a solid lump of metal. Um, when we uh, take the switch out later on, you have a look. It's actually an integrated plate and it's about three millimeters thick, so it, it, it's it's solid. The plate's as thick as the uh, the base is here, so it's a chunk of metal. Um, Darth, what's his face saying? 60 XT, 60 XT, 60 XT. Yep, here it is. This is what's going to get built today. Um, we are going to. So, so Pingo actually sent me some uh, switches that have been pre looped. I don't know what with, but I believe they're uh, retooled MX Blacks with 63.5 gram springs. Um, and we're going to lube his stabilizers because the stabilizer he put in the board uh, went up to muster. So, we are going to fix those for him um, as well. So, we'll start with the uh, 60 XT build. We'll start with doing those stabilizers, getting them in the board. Uh, and then we'll move from there onto the Ocelot. Uh, we do also have a giveaway later on today, thanks to the kind people at uh, keyboardplates.com. We'll be giving away this uh, lovely space brand plate. So I'm sure you guys can see there the little warning and onboard hardware signs at the bottom. So this is an ANSI plate. Um, but yeah, we'll be giving this away later on on stream. So pay attention because it will be trivia. <coughs> Uh, we'll also be looking at the T1 switches. So this is one of the smoky housing T1 switches. It's probably going to look black on stream. Let's see if it looks any better up here. Um, no, it's not going to focus. Um, yeah, so this is one of the uh, smoky housings. They do look black, but I can guarantee you that. Oh, there you go. You might just be able to see the orange there with the light reflecting on it, which is the copper leaf inside. So there you go. There you go. Uh, so we look at those, we've got those in a board, uh, some of those in a board with some Holly Pandas, some Zelio V2s, uh, I've got both the clear and the smoky housing so we can see there's a sound difference between the two, uh, and then I've also got a single clipped Holly Panda as well, uh, just so you guys can hear what the sound difference is between all of them. Uh, and oh Chester Ronnie, thank you very much dude with the uh, the sub for three months in a row, <laughs> saying hi dad, hey man, thank you very much for that, I really appreciate that. Uh, and Luna Twix as well with the, uh, the Twitch Prime sub as well dude, really appreciate that man, thank you very much, thank you. Um, Met Advice Guy says, Fax stabs, I hope. Uh, I don't know, they came with the board. They are proper GMK screwing stabs, so I will defer to Pingu if he wants to answer that one. Um, Darth is saying it's secret lube. I don't know if it is secret lube. I assume it's just Crytox, so that's what it feels like. Um, but I don't know how he's lubed them, so there we go. Uh, Straight Class is saying, Hey, boys, and I'm looking nice and cute. So, oh, thank you, man. It's my little dimples here, isn't it? See, it's the little dimples, that's what people like. Final Frank, holla. Good to see you, dude. Okay, we'll just give it another minute, wait for the bot to ping in the Discord, uh, and then we'll crack on from there. Oh, 68 Sprit Springs and 3204, he says. Okay, it feels like 106 or 105, something like that. Um, they are nice and smooth, though. They are 
well looped, properly looped, good job. So yeah, so we'll build it with these later on. Probably not showing up on the camera, there we go. There we go. Um, how do you sign up for Jay being our dad? Well, you just have to be good enough. Um, evening, Bled, thank you very much for joining, dude. Uh, Soran says, you stay enough in Europe. Um, maybe that might do the job. Yeah, maybe. And we've got ISO returns as well. Hey man, good to see you, dude. Good to see you. I'm just going to check and see what's happening with the bots. See if anything is actually going on there. Oh no, I just got a ping so from Dart saying, get going. Get going. Um, we are. We are going. We are going. Hopefully the bot will ping in a minute and then we'll, uh, we'll, make, a, we'll make a start. And Bled loves how I wave at the dash cam. Yeah, you gotta gotta wave at the cam. Yeah, yeah. It's not. Yeah, it's just one of those things. It's my way of saying hi to you guys. That's all it is. Um, Chester only saying first time we've seen the 60 XT. Will this be a private group buy in the future? Um, so Pinga just ran some prototypes at the moment. This is one of them. Uh, I think Stormlex and Tyson have got some others. I don't know how many prototypes he made. Um, I'm sure. Uh, I'm sure Pingu, who's in chat, will be able to post and tell us about that. Um, but this is one of the prototypes. We'll have a look at some of its features and quirks uh, and stuff that Pingu is already addressing first. Then we'll carry on with the stabs. We'll loop the stabs, we'll put them in the PCB. We'll put it all together. We'll solder it. We'll put the switches in. We'll solder it. Uh, we'll do a little bit of a sound typing demo. We'll move on to the Ocelot. Then we'll move on to the T1 switches sound test. And then we'll do the giveaway right at the end of the stream. Hopefully, we'll be done in about two, two and a half hours, something like that. Um, and we'll see how we get. Uh, still no bot ping. Still no bot ping. Uh, I have got another message, let me just have a quick check for that. Um, okay. Uh, oh, we've also got Holy Panzer, that great, Kelly. Good to see you, dude. Uh, when's, when's your stream? You're supposed to be building one of my boards for me, so I need to see your stream, man. Um, sexy XT, uh, yes, it is. Uh, and uh, Maro Ken, uh, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, I'm sorry if I'm not, uh, with the 100 bits, thank you very much, I really appreciate that, dude. Um, Pingu's still working out to find a decent manufacturer. Uh, there's three of these right now. One with Jay, one with Tyson, one with Stomach. So there we go. So I was right. Yeah, that's the three that there are. Um, Bled says, meant to ask last week what's on the screen behind you. Um, so that is just um, lo fi hip hop and chill because it's just nice to work with some music. Um, and I can't play thrash metal or something like that on stream and uh, still be able to concentrate. Uh, cool. Okay. So I think the bot's finally pinged. So we're going to make a start, guys. We're going to actually uh, start to build this thing now. Uh, put them to one side. There, the uh, screws for the ocelot. So we're going to have a look at the 60XC first. So in terms of the board, this is it right here. Um, it is a sandwich. So it's not connected together at the minute, so it's, it's a little bit loose. But it is a sandwich mount board. Uh, this is kind of the board look you're going to get. Uh, macro column on the left, two sets of five keys, so 10 macro keys in total. 60% uh, layout for the main section with two uh, blockers making it the full wing keyless. Um, it does come in ISO and ANSI variants. Um, so this is the ANSI one, which is, uh, I believe this is Pingu's personal one. Um, so there we go. Um, if we just take the top off and have a look on the inside, you can see here that it's the plate sandwiched, so it won't press down inside the case. Here. It, it is on a lip all the way around, but it does screw down as well. So as the screws hold the top and the bottom together, the plate's held in place as well. So it's full on sandwich mount. Taking the plate out, looking in the base, uh, we've got the standard cutout for USB up in the top corner. But interestingly as well, what we've also got across the rest of the base is we've got cutouts for the stabilizers uh, for um, well, for, for, for shift, for space, uh, for anti-enter, for ISO enter, for backspace. Interestingly enough, and I don't know why, if you can tell me why, Pingu, but there isn't the ones over here for the full left shift as well. Um, I don't know if that's uh, something that's going to make it into the final version or if that's just something, a quirk of this prototype. Uh, but there we go. And you can see here this lip is where the plate sits on all the way around the edge. That runs on all four sides. Just flipping the board over, excuse fingerprints, it's really cold as this metal, so anything that's going to show uh, fingerprints. Um, you can see it's got the standard four screw ports all down one side, four on the other side, uh, and some nice feet indents as well, but no feet on this at the moment, no bump pans on there. Um, just on the side profile, it has got uh, a nice angled design here, so this is very reminiscent of some of the TX boards, some of the early TX boards where you could get your fingers underneath to pick it up. Um, but inside the case, as you can see just down here, it's quite tight. 
um, might be easier to show you on the back piece actually. So there isn't much gap between the bottom of the PCB and the, uh, the base plate of the material. Looking at the back, uh, just the USB cutout which is nicely shaped and is perfect for the USB port, uh, so for mini USB. Um, that's really, really well done. Uh, it's not one of these boards that has a massive hole in it. Um, I'm really impressed by how nicely that fits and how flush it fits. Um, so there we go. Uh, in terms of the board, I think Pingu's addressed these when he's talked about the board before. This was one of the early prototypes, so it has got a couple of dents on from manufacturers, such as around this corner, um, and then just on the edges here as well, there's some slight indents. I'm not sure they're showing up on camera. But these are just manufacturing flaws from the prototyping phase, um, and I'm sure they'll be gone if the board runs to production. Uh, so I think Pingu might have answered a couple of questions there, so let's just catch up with chat and see what you guys are talking about. Uh, Darth says, plays thrash metal, you coward. No, you're all right. Uh, we've got facts as well. Hey man, I hope you're feeling better and not too hungover today. Um, uh, Stab Daddy's here, yeah. Uh, the Rife 60 XT will be amazing though. Yes, I think it will be. I think the layout's going to be great. Um, I like my macro keys. As you can see, I've got my JER Mini here. Um, I love a little macro column on the left hand side. I think it's great. Uh, and in fact, I got the plate for my board through today, the, uh, the J01. Um, so you can see here, I've got very similar taste because I've got the macro column at the side as well. Um, so, you know, I'm fully on all for that. Um, what else are we talking about in chat? Um, any dents available? Um, yeah, there's a couple of marks on the on the thing, but you know it's a prototype. It's kind of designed to be handled around. I think a few people have had it. It's been in my cupboard for a while. Uh, it's one of those things. Um, <laughs> Holly Panda is waiting for uh, Aunt Grey. Kelly's waiting to get stabs to do the build of my Daisy. Very cool design, says Chesteroni. I'm digging the macro columns on the left and the wing keyless. Uh, yeah, props pingo, it's a good layout. I like it too. Uh, Something that's saying A and Titan as well. Hey guys, good to see you. Good evening. Uh, what else are we talking about? Rope as well. Hey man, good to see you, Rope. Um, <laughs> people asking if there's any gasket available. Well, gasket wouldn't work on this particular board unless it took some redesign. Um, so yeah. Uh, the stab cuts are a proto quirk indeed. What you have is a second revision. I simply forgot them for the anti left shift. Ah, there we go. Okay, simple, nice and easily done. Uh, we've got James in chat as well and Odin. Hey guys, thank you very much for joining. Um, and we've got Distal as well. Uh, is it only for me or is the sound silent and with rumble in the background? Um, you should be able to hear me just clear. If you can't, I can have a look. If people call out that there's an issue, I'll take a look. Um, Talisman Solutions as well. Hey man, good to see you dude. Uh, Ocelot looking good. Yeah, the Ocelot's amazing. All comes to that in a bit. 159, thanks for joining man. Uh, Lumina when? <laughs> is Tez in the chat? Is Tez around? I've not seen him yet. Okay. Uh, and we've got Tefram34 as well. Oh, we've got Necroman as well. Hey Necroman, good to see you dude. Um, and Elliot as well. Hey man, good to see you as well. Okay, so this is the 60XT then. So we've talked about the board. If anyone's got any questions, ping me or Pingu in the chat and ask away. Um, we'll come back to the board in a few minutes because what we're going to do now is we're going to clip and loop the stabilizers really quickly, get this build underway. I'm just going to make a little bit of space there. Well, before we do that, we'll just have a look at the PCB. Uh, so as you can see, it says 60XT on it. Uh, it supports a few different layouts, but it's quite clean cut in terms of what it does. Um, so there's no uh, real alternates. You have the macro keys down here. Um, you can have split left shift or you can have full left shift, uh, stepped or non-step caps, uh, split backspace or non-split backspace, and then you can have the whole ISO or ANSI uh, row there. In terms of bottom row, it only supports one bottom row because it's wing keyless, so that's the seven new space bar option. Um, so yeah, there we go guys, that's the PCB. So I'll put that to one side as well. And what we're going to do first is we're just going to clip and lube these stabilizers really quickly. So for those of you who don't know or haven't watched one of these streams before, the stabilizers have four legs on the bottom. I'm going to try and show you these on camera. Uh, you can see it's four legs on the bottom there. What we're going to do is clip the one in this corner here, the top corner up here, and the one in this bottom corner as well. This one in the bottom corner as well, it does have a raised bit, so it kind of leaves a bump on top of the bottom of the stabilizer. So if I hold it up like this, you might just be able to see there's a little bump there. Uh, might not be clear enough, but we're going to make sure we take rid of that as well. So there's no bump and it's completely flush on the top. So that's two clips. Nice and easy. 
and there you go you can see that that bump is now gone if I try and angle it there you go you can see it's nice and flat on the bottom and the two thin legs have been removed as well so I'm just going to replicate that across all of these and pingu bin pingu uh, there's quite a few stabs on this build so it will take me a minute or two to complete this making progress through these guys I'll be as quick as I can um, I did want to do this off stream I just ran out of time today I'm afraid uh, but we'll get there really quickly sorry I'm conscious I'm not clicking these on stream actually okay almost there now Just catch up with chat, see what you guys are talking about. Um, Thoughtbot says, "Oh yes, that's it." Uh, Met advice guy says, "Don't make, uh, yeah, don't make my mistake I made earlier this week where I forgot to install the stabs before soldering in the switches and installed the plate." Oh man, that sucks. That sucks. But it's one of those things that happens, man. Everyone does it at some point. Uh, we've got UPass as well in the chat. Hey man, good to see. Uh, unorganized as usual. I'm not German, facts. I don't have that uh, German uh, um, efficiency. Get rid of these bits. Okay, there we go. There we go. Okay, so that's those clipped. Uh, now what we're going to do is we're going to put them together and then we're going to loop them. So in terms of a stabilizer at the front, you'll see that there are two holes. Uh, if I can get this angled, there you go. So you can see there's two holes on the front side and there's just a single hole on the back. Oops. If I can get that showing. There you go. Just one hole on the back. The two holes that are at the front, they go to the front of the uh, the clip. So if I show you the clip here, so this is the housing, you can see that it's got a kind of section here at the front, that's where the wire clips into. Um, so that's how you tell which way around the two holes go. So the two holes go to that side. And then it should look something a little bit like that. Then what we're going to do is you're going to take your wire, install it into the bottom of the two holes. And then once it's in the bottom of the two holes, you're just going to clip it into the front, just like so. There you go, you can see that's all nicely in place. We're going to repeat that for the other side, and then we're going to repeat that for all of the other stabilizers, and then we're going to crack on with the lube. Okay. Uh, tells me, yeah, we've been up like 10 minutes, maybe 15. Uh, was just after the hour when I started the stream, which means I'm behind schedule already. <laughs> Not as long as Brian's stream last night though, eight hours I think that was, or just shy of eight hours, which is a long old stream. Okay, I assemble before lubing, yes I do, um, and the reason I do that is because I like to make sure that I push lube all around everything. Sometimes when you assemble after you've lubed, you basically scrape the lube off of the wire as you're putting it together. Um, so this is just my way of doing it. There's no right or wrong way, uh, there's just different ways. Um, so you know, feel free to do it however you like. Okay making some good progress now guys and then we can crack on with lubing these last one we go all put together so now what we're going to do is we're going to loop them I use dielectric grease uh, you can use 205 grade zero if you want I tend to use dielectric grease because it's just cheap it's easy to work with um, and it does a good job and it's not something that's going to harm your PCB and then I take a small brush and then what we do is we take the stabilizer and if you hold it to one side slide out the housing 
small amount on the brush, not too much. And we're going to lube that side there. We're going to then turn it over. We're going to lube the other side nice and neatly. We're going to take a blob and then on the back of the stabilizer where you can see the wire poking through, that little silver dot, we're going to push as deep as you can all the way around to try and soak up the wire. A nice amount in there. Then going to take a little bit more and then we're going to paste all across the front of the brush uh, with the brush across the wire, up the wire and into the front of the stabilizer housing. Just like so. Then I'm going to turn it over, take a nice rice sized amount and we're just going to paint that across the bottom effectively. And that's one side done. Should be enough left on the brush to do the sides and remember you can always add more lube, you can't take it away very easily so don't ever go overboard with it, just try and get it feeling nice, um, add a little bit, try it, add a little bit more see how you feel and just keep going so you're comfortable and you're happy with your job okay there we go that's one done move on to the second one. Right, I'm just going to try and catch up with chat while I do this quickly. Uh, UPass says uh, the Satisfaction 7 to 5 is doing great. It's hoping to do another prototype after New Year's Eve. Uh, after Chinese New Year, sorry. It's me reading that wrong. Uh, May Advice says thank you. Jay's pace is so fast in contrast to Quirkham's giving the impression that the house is on fire. Uh, no, I've just got a lot to do in a short amount of time. Um, sadly, I don't have the luxury of being able to stream for seven hours doing a build. I've got to be up for work in the morning, so and it's just gone eight o'clock here, p.m. So I just need to make sure that I'm done in a reasonable amount of time that I can get plenty of sleep. getting there guys that's uh, almost two done there we go move on to the space bar uh Bledin says just shy of seven hours last night top, uh, uh, top crack yes so i think that was brian's stream it was a pretty long one um i know sashimi was doing it as well i know there was a couple of builds in there uh, but still it was a, a very long stream um i wish i could stream for that kind of amount of time but sadly I can't. Um, I feel like this is way cleaner too. I use lube fast and get my hands with lube on them. Um, yeah, I try not to get lube on my hands. It's a nightmare to clean off, and I get quite bad eczema if I uh, uh, if I'm not careful. So I try not to wash my hands unless I have to. Um, so doing stuff like this isn't ideal, really, if it's going to get everywhere. Uh, but it is a little bit cleaner. It is a little bit neater. And using a brush absolutely helps that. But hey, if you don't like this way, you don't have to use this way. You can use whatever way fits for you. Uh, so do try and experiment with different bits and pieces. Uh, see how you feel about uh, other methods. What else are we talking about? Uh, ever got around to assembling this ISO hull? Uh, I haven't as yet, no. I have got the PCBs now. Um, I will try and put that together at some point soon. Um, if I do, I tend to do most of my building on stream purely because I just don't have any other time to build apart from Sunday evening these days. Um, so if I do do it, you will definitely know about it. Uh, or when I do it, sorry, it won't be an if, it's a definite when. Okay. Okay, that's that one done. On to the last two now. Uh, 60XT is nicer already. Uh, why is yours nicer? Because it's ISO, I suspect. 
Um, this one doesn't, well the PCB supports it, but the plate that Pingu's asked me to build with doesn't have the uh, ISO compatibility on, which is fine. Um, you know, that's his choice entirely, that's how he wants this building, so I'm completely confident with that. Running out of loop here. We should just have enough to do these last two. And then we'll be able to make a start on putting this together and getting the board all put nice and neatly together. Okay, what else we talk about in chat? Um uh, I'm still unsure about what lubing technique I prefer. Lithic, for example, uses a lot more grease on his stabs, dips into the tube, etc. Whereas this is quite a minimalist lubing technique. My my view on lubing is what you're trying to do is you're trying to take away the rattle from stabilizers, okay? Uh, and that's twofold. That's when it's in the board uh, and you're typing on it and you can feel the bottom out, uh, take away that rattle. And then the second thing that you're trying to do is you're trying to take away the actual rattle from the keycap that moves left and right. Um, so effectively, anywhere where you have metal on metal contact, uh, sorry, metal and plastic contact, then I try and lube in those areas there. And anywhere that you have plastic on plastic contact, I try and lube those areas there as well. I just find it easier to lube one surface rather than both, because if you lube both surfaces, so if I did inside the housing instead of the insides of the sliders, sorry, the outside of the sliders, what I tend to find is you put too much lube on, it's too difficult to control how much lube you're actually expressing onto the, uh, the stabiliser, whereas if you do it this way, um, both become coated with use very quickly. Um, and it's easier to regulate the amount of lube you're applying as well. But that's just my thoughts on this. I uh, just realised that this isn't clipped in properly. I'm just going to get that in now. There we go. But as I say, there's more than one way to skin a cat in this game. So if there's anything that you dislike about someone's method, um, you know, there's always another way to go, there's always another way to do it. Um, so just try and experiment. But remember, it's always easier to add more lube than it is to take it away. So just be careful on how much you're adding. And don't try and go too overboard with it. Okay, really close to running out of lube here. I think this is the most stabilizers I've put in a single build in a long time. Okay. Just about there now, guys. Just got the bases of both of these to do. Let's try and scrape the last of the lube out of this lid. making sure you paint it nice and evenly all on the bottom as well. Trying to get the wire and the plastic here on this bit. There we go. There we go, so that's all of those lubed and put together. Now I'm gasping for a drink. Okay, let's catch up with chat properly. Um, Right, okay. Uh, thoughts on the Romley mechanical switch book? I think it looks great. I, I really want to buy one. Uh, I want to get the Japanese and the English version, but I definitely want to get one. Um, uh, Titan says he combines the Quakums and the Nathan Kim method. So I used to use the Nathan Kim method. That was the way I learned how to do them, and I've just kind of modified over time, and this is where I've ended up. Um, that's just my feel. Uh, Talisman Solutions says, you and me both, Jay, IRL responsibilities, yeah, man, work, 60 hours a week, something like that, uh, wife, um, dog, they take up a ton of time, other family commitments as well, um, doing the stream on a Thursday, trying to find time to do the build, uh, trying to do stuff with the cars as well, because I'm a big car nut, um, yeah, it's difficult to try and find all the time. Okay, there we go. <clears throat> um, what else are we talking about? Anarchy says, uh, streams title is still showing the same as yesterday's one, FYI, is it? 
Um, it shows as correct for me. It shows as the today's one for me. If anyone else can corroborate that, please. Uh, oh, uh, yeah. Okay, oh, okay. I think yeah. I think you're right. I think you opened it before um, I set it up and started the stream going. Mr. Petrov says, Jay, how do you feel about using a heavier spring on space bar compared to the other keys? Uh, generally, it's something I do. Um, so this board has got 78 gram springs in it, but the space bar is 100 grams. Um, I genuinely do it on most of my builds because I think it's a lot nicer to have that. Um, so yeah. Um, what else are we talking about? Uh, Doyu Studio is selling clothes now. I hear Nathan Kim will sell you a shirt as well if you uh, if you really want one. Uh, where, where is the iron brew? No iron brew today. It's just coke and water today. Um, no iron brew. It's in the fridge. Uh, no, 60 hours, not 16. 60. Uh, 6 0. Yeah. Uh, yeah, 60 hours a week. Um, technically, I'm contracted to 45 or something like that, but my job is just insane. So the amount of travel that I have to do, um, most, of my, um, most of my day's travel is probably two and a half hours each way. Um, so it's probably five hours a day just in travel alone, plus a full working day as well. So, yeah. Uh, did a build a T1 yet? I'm not doing a T1 build today, but what we are going to do is look at a board that's got some T1 switches in it. So this board here uh, has got a few different switches in. Uh, it's got a Holy Panda that's got a stem clipped. Um, let me just grab a switch puller. <sighs> Sorry, a keycap puller. Um, it's got uh, a normal Holy Pandas in, or two of them. It's got clear. T1 switches, yes the stems are a different colour but these are the prototype stems, um, it's got T1 again, prototype stem, ignore the colour, it is a T1, I guarantee it, um, uh, smoky housings and then we've got uh, Zelio V2s, so we've got two of each so we can just test and see what they sound like all the way through. So we're going to do this right at the very end of the stream uh, with just some DSA caps uh, and uh, a wooden case. Uh, the reason I picked a wooden case is to amplify the sound a little bit and try and give you a better idea of what the real sound is. Um, and we do have another T1 switch somewhere. So here's the other T1 switch. This is the actual smoky production one which will be round two. Uh, and as you can see it is smoky. You can kind of see the smoked effect just there on the back of the switch where the leaf is showing through. Uh, and that's the teal stem that will be in them as well. Uh, I have got a full batch of 150-ish um, uh, clear switches coming, clear T ones. They should be here on Tuesday, and I've also got a full batch of smoky ones coming as well. So I can do a whole build with the smoky T ones as well. Um, so that's going to be later on. Oh, you want to be closer to the camera? Uh, it's not going to zoom. Let's try this one. That's the T1. Uh, they are really nice switches. Uh, we'll come on to them in a little bit. Uh, yeah, uh, they are the T1 switches. Yes, they are in here as well. So there's four T1s in here, two clear and two smoky ones. Um, the T1s haven't had a recall, um, but what has happened with them is uh, a very few of them about, about I think it's from what Way said, I think it's something like um, three in every hundred. So about 3% of the switches have a chatter issue. So they actually actuate with a tiny bit of pressure on them rather than a full actuation. Um, I haven't been able to replicate it with the tennis side that I've got here at the minute, but as soon as I've got a full set they will be going in this board which is hot swap and I'll try them out and I'll, I'll set a report back to Wayne and see how many I find as well. Um, so we'll talk about that and we'll see how that goes on later on. Um, Talisman Solutions, wow with the five uh, tier one subs, ah oh, thank you man I really appreciate that dude. Uh, so that puts Neo Jonathan, the high five, uh, rope, Darth what's his face and Ermo Gerd Bertman. Uh, into the purple club wow thank you very much guys and that's 39 subs that you've donated uh, to top pack um, wow wow thank you very much really appreciate that uh, talisman solutions yeah we're almost at partner status so uh, a couple more streams and a few more bits and pieces uh, and we'll be there guys we'll be there so yeah um, wow thank you thank you really 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 thank you talisman I really appreciate that um, Pog, yeah, absolutely, Pog. Uh, is that the Imperial Hue case? No, this is not. This is just a wooden case off of uh, AliExpress. Um, it's fine for what it is. It's okay. But the reason I picked this is because it'll amplify the sound a little bit and make it easy for you guys to tell the differences between the switches. Um, so yeah, that's one of those things. 
we'll come back to that later on. Okay, so now we've got the stabilizers all done, we're gonna put them into the board. Uh, so for here we have one for backspace. Put that down. We then have one for the uh, anti-enter, when I can work out where it needs to go. Uh, you can tell I don't build with, uh, sorry, that's actually right shift. You can tell I don't build ANSI boards very often. This one is going to be the ANSI enter. And we're going to do the right shift. And then we're going to put the space bar in as well. Okay, so that's all of those in place. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to screw these in. Uh, just grab my screwdriver and screwdriver bit. So again, when you're putting these screws in, you all you're trying to do is just keep the uh, uh, the, the stabilizer flush. You're not trying to screw it down with any great force. You just want to nip it tight, but not too tight. Uh, you don't want to be trying to crush the PCB or over screwing these because if you do, you risk damaging not only the stabilizer, but the PCB as well. Uh, and that's not where you want to be guys. So just finger tight really. Um, you don't want to over tighten at all. And I will say, Pingu, this is a really nicely rooted board because uh, there's not anywhere, even with the ISO, where the uh, the screws will need uh, any padding underneath because they won't short out. Um, so it's really unusual to see a board with that much thought and care gone into the uh, into the routing. So thank you very much for that, dude. screw on the end of the screwdriver. There we go. I'm conscious that one of the stabilizers has fallen out, don't worry, we'll get to that, we'll come back to it. One thing I was going to ask you as well, Pingu, is it, are you going to make uh, this support via IA, uh, VIA? via whatever you want to call it, the new tool that Olivia has developed because that would be really, really useful uh, for Luddites like me who struggle uh, with any real programming. So if you are going to arrange that, I'd be very, very happy. Oh, come on, there we go. Okay, I'm just going to pop this stabilizer back in. This is for the right shift. And then once we've done this, these two, we're going to start on putting some switches into the board. Okay. There we go. So as I said before, when we checked earlier on, you don't want any rattle at this stage in your stabilizer. So quick check. No rattle. All good. Okay, we're going to take the plate and just make sure everything lines up nice and neatly. And there you go guys, you can see that that all sits together nice and neatly and flush. Okay, let's just catch up with the chat really, really quickly. Um, uh, we've got Seb Sarush as well. Uh, hey man, good to see you. Uh, Darth is saying, "Oh wow!" with his uh, with his sub. Those of you that have got subs, you should really check out the top like Discord in a couple of hours once that comes through, because um, there might be there might be a secret channel there. Um, seven degree wood case. Uh, yes, it is seven degrees. I think it's something like that. I don't really use it for for much other than the typing tests. Um, nice butt. Thanks, James. Love that. <laughs> Uh, never heard of T1 switches who makes them uh, keyboard fans uh, or way who runs keyboard fan store or the holy ways is the other name for the switches as well 
how many newton meters are you using to tighten it? Um, I don't know because I, I can go get a newton meter wrench out of the garage if you want and uh, find out, but very few, very few, maybe less than one. Um, I realised ordering a set of 200 M2 washers was a big brain move because they work perfectly for screen stuff. Yeah, they do. This PCB is really well designed. Uh, there's nowhere, on, sometimes on the bottom of the PCB, what you tend to find is that where you put one of the screws for the screen stabs, it will actually cover two components and it will shot them out and you have to put a little bit of paper or a little um, a paper washer in or something like that. Uh, Pingu on this one has done a great job. So yeah, thank you very much for that Pingu. Um, makes it a lot easier to, to build these boards when they're, uh, they're rooted properly. Uh, oh, 159, thank you for linking uh, to my uh, <laughs> first impressions uh, write up of the, uh, the T ones. Uh, Meet Headville, will there be T1 testing versus clipped holy pandas? Uh, yes, I'm going to test them against uh, Zeal V2s, I'm going to test the smoky housings, and I'm going to test the clear housings of the T ones. Uh, we're going to test them against holy pandas, and then I've got a single clipped holy panda as well, which will give you an idea of what they all look like. None of these switches are lubed, they're all unlubed, so even the pandas aren't lubed, so take that as you will. Uh, that means we've just got an even level playing field for all the switches. Uh, yeah, Darth, it's same for me. Code and literates, yeah, that's that's it, yeah. Uh, which second arrow layer are you using? Uh, HHKB, WSD, or JKLI? Uh, on this board, I won't be doing either because I'm not going to code it in. Uh, I'm just going to build the board, do a sign typing test. Um, and then I'm going to wait for Pink to put into VIA. Um, if it was my board, what I would do on a wing keyless 64 arrows is I would have them on the uh, JKL and I. Uh, so going back to the old uh, Vim keys to type layout, that's that's how I would have it. Uh, and Pona, with 17 months of Twitch Prime, thank you, man. I really appreciate it, dude. Um, your support means everything to us uh, for all of the uh, all of the, uh, the the donations, the subs, Twitch Prime subs, everything. Thank you, man. Really appreciate it, dude. Uh, VIA sounds like it's for day casuals, yeah, just like me. That's exactly what it's for. Uh, what would you compare those T1 switches to? If you give a read of the link that 159 put in there, I do a bit of an overview. Um, they're as tactile, if not more so, than Holly Pandas, uh, but they're more of a Zeal V2 competitor um, than a Holly Panda competitor. Uh, Top Crack, you meant to say you don't regularly lose a torque wrench to tighten the screw stabs. <laughs> no, I don't, just only no, I don't. But I do have all the tools in the garage for the cars. So if someone really wants me to do that one day, I could probably get the adapters to work on a screw this small and, and see how many new meters it is. Um, we could try. We could try. Uh, shame about the PCB colour. Uh, personally, I prefer a blue PCB or a black PCB or something else. But hey, it's Pingu's board. Green's fine. The, play, the plate's back. Green and black look fine together. It's not too bad. Um, the only time I dislike a coloured PCB that I or if a PCB is a colour I don't like, sorry, is when you have a plate that's just you know completely universal. Uh, my view is you should have plates that are either ANSI like this one or ISO uh, like this one. Um, just have a plate that's you know uh, exactly what the layout you want is. Um, and I'd really like to see a lot of goodbye runners off of that, but that's just my view, and uh, some people disagree with that. Uh, PCB should be the colour of magic. Um, yeah, everything is the colour of magic. Okay, so we're going to move on to the switches now. I'm going to pop the switches in place. So these are MX Black Retools, lubed with uh, 3204 lube and 68 gram springs is what uh, Pingu is telling me. So we're going to pop these in place and then we'll solder the board all together. <clears throat> okay. One thing I would like to ask Pingo is why is that one switch upside down? Uh, why is that rotated so it's facing the opposite direction? I think it's the only switch on the board that is rotated. When I was looking at it earlier on, it was the only one I could see that was rotated. Uh, Jay, there might be a silent switch in there for the space bar. Right, okay, thanks. It's not separate. Okay, we'll see if we find that out. Um, <laughs> that switch is facing the other direction for us. Okay, fine, fair enough, that explains it. Thank you very much, thank you. You should have a word with Martin. I think he puts it um, like uh, like this, so facing that way. If it's gonna show on camera. Why is the contrast so bad on this today? Um, yeah, so instead of being like that, he has it sideways like that, or the other way around, I can't remember. So LED facing left or right rather than north or south. OK. 
Okay. Switches have got hairs in the bag. I guess you've got a dog or a cat. Uh, is it just me or is this squared? Is, is this square speed keyboard building? Yeah, I'm being slow today actually, really slow. 45 minutes in and I've only just done the stabilizers. Um, that is very slow for me. For some reason that switch doesn't want to go in. Let's come back to that one. Okay, now if I remember rightly, uh, a cherry black with a silent stem. The stem's actually slightly grey. So I'm going to be on the lookout for that. Mm, that switch doesn't want to go in. We'll come back to it. Oh, it's the actual switch that doesn't want to go in. Okay, interesting. Interesting. Uh, okay, the legs bent out on it. There we go. Now it should go in. There we go. So what was happening just there is one of the legs that holds the, uh, the switch together was just uh, bent slightly out of shape. I am really aware as well, guys, that this is a black on black build, so you're going to really struggle to see it. So I do apologise. these switches just aren't quite having the leg shut but we'll get there okay I will say as well Pingu the uh, anodization on this plate this matte black is really nice um, I will give it a clean down with some isopropyl and some cotton buds after I finish the build because I'm conscious it's going to have fingerprints on it um, so I will make sure it's nice and clean before I ship this back to you. Again, just one of these legs, just not quite in place. Um, there it is. Oh, do you know what? I picked it up right as I was going to do the spacebar switch. How lucky is that? How lucky is that? Okay. Uh, let's just catch up with chat, see what's going on. Um... Dyslexia, ah, uh, <laughs> uh, hates me, dyslexia. How do you like to spell? Woo, yeah, that's the way it goes. Um, check Discord. What am I checking Discord for? What am I checking Discord for? I've got some messages that I'll come back to later. I don't have time to check it now. Um, these are retool blacks. Yeah, oh, um, Pingu's answered that one. Uh, Truth God says, would you recommend Gatoron Browns or something different? I don't like Gatoron Browns if you want a tactile switch. Um, there are more options than that on the market. Um, Holly Pandas are really cheap now, less than a dollar if you want to pick them up. You can get uh, um, Jesus switches and put some things, some different stems in those. You can get Zelio V2s, you can get the T1s from where, you can get mod switches. The, the world's your oyster if you, want, uh, if you want tactile switches these days. Um, solid linear lube. Yeah, these are lubed with 3, 2, or 4. I didn't lube these. These were lubed by Pingu and he sent them to me pre lubed. Um, so, yeah, everything is good from that perspective. Again, just that leg, not quite closed. I think these have got switch films on, which is possibly why some of these legs, yeah, they do, which is why some of these legs aren't quite closing. So, the switch films go between the top and the bottom of the housing on the switch. Um, and that sometimes does just make them a little bit difficult to close and gives you some slight issues with clearance and tolerances but it does also make sure that you lose some wobble in terms of the actual feel of the switch and the keycaps on the switch as well okay making some good progress now guys with the switches Thought that one had closed. There we go. Just that leg as well. Front leg. There we go. 
Okay. Uh, Pingy, you need to tell me now whether you want step caps or normal caps lock. Um, let's see what you think. Uh, how did I miss the word giveaway? Did we get any info on it? Yes. So the giveaway is going to be run towards the end of this stream. Uh, it's for a uh, plate, uh, an AMC uh, plate. I'll show you now. This is from keyboardplates.com, which is a uh, partner company of uh, uh, LaserBoost. And they've kindly sent me this uh, space themed plate with all of this kind of NASA style um, engraving on the bottom. 60% uh, tray mount or whatever else you want it to be. Um, yeah, switch stop opening included. So we're going to give away this towards the end of the stream. And it's going to be based on a little bit of trivia. But we'll talk about that more when we get to that portion of the stream. Okay. Uh, what else are we talking about? Sky switches, sky switches are also kind of cheap and they have silent burns as well. Uh, yes, but I would say they're quite scratchy. There's also Arctos, uh, which speaking of which, no one contacted me after the Top Clack stream. Um, so given the fact that I've got 150 Arctos switches, if anyone does want them, contact me, pay postage. You can have 75 of them, uh, 60. 2 grams and 68 grams I think the switches are so take your pick, whoever gets in touch first gets to pick um, I can send them out probably at some point next week step caps he says there we go that's step caps again there's another one of these switches not quite shut properly I think someone's pinging me there for the Arctos switches. Just felt my phone vibrate in my pocket. Okay, almost there, guys. And then once we've got all of these in place, once we've got all of these in place, we'll quickly solder it together, pop it all in the board, pop some caps on it. Uh, the only spare set that I've managed to grab hold of at short notice for this Pingu is going to be uh, GMK Sky Dolch, which is kind of my test set for everything because it just lives in the drawer next to uh, next to where I build. Um, so that's what we're going to put it on today. Okay, and there we go. That is all of the switches put into the PCB. What I'm going to do now is just have a check and make sure that everything is nice and flush. Um, so what we're going to do here is just check that everything is flushed down the edges. Uh, that's not really showing up for you guys, but there you go. You can see the switches are nice and tight. The black plate gives off so much shadow. Everything's nice and tight all down that edge as well. And then there, and there as well. As you can see, there's no gaps in there, otherwise you'll be able to see all the way through. Everything looks like it's going to be just fine there. Everything feels good. We've got the space bar, the silent switch in there. So we're good to go. Okay, just going to move the case just out of the way just for a second. And then we can use a solder wheel just here. Okay, so let's just catch up. So you've definitely said step caps. Uh, Pona says yes. Don't know what to. Um, let's see. Sky switches need to be lubed. Yeah, I would definitely agree on that. And we've got Andy in the chat, Andy Holland as well. Uh, one of these days, I'm going to order some plates from Laser Boost. Do you know what? I get so many plates from Laser Boost. Uh, the one that I've got for my J01, which is my custom board, uh, is fantastic. This this came through at the same time. Um, I'm really happy with the quality of this. This is sandblasted brass. Cut to my exact specifications. Um, looks really good fits the board perfectly, or I'm hoping it does, um, but it fits the layout perfectly anyway. Uh, Truth Goads 24 says, the thing with Gage and Browns is they have a slightly bigger tactile bump than Cherries or Utamu switches, but at the same time they're not the best build quality. Do you have any switch recommendations with around the same tactile bump force of around 45 grams of pressure to be applied along with Cherry MX stems? I'm not the biggest fan of Zelio switches. Um, so I think that, Ut uh, that, that Gator and Browns have a really low amount of tactility. Um, I think they're quite a small tactile bump, to be honest with you. Uh, if you want something similar to that, you could try Allianz switches uh, or R1 Zelios. I know you say you're not a fan of Zelio switches, but uh, the R1 Zelios are very similar. Um, the Allianz switches from uh, keyboard fans are quite good as well. If you like it, well, uh, I revise that. I don't think they're good personally, but they, I think they're, they're 
pretty much what you're looking for in terms of that type of switch. Um, they uh, they do come in quite a low uh, um, weighting. I think the lowest is 62. I don't know if they'll go as low as 45. Most, the problem you have with most tactile switches at 45 grams is that they just won't return because the tactile bump's too big. Um, so you could consider some silent linears as well. You might like those. Um, it's definitely something to try, definitely something to look at. Okay, so we're going to get on with the soldering here. Oh, and Talisman Solutions and gifted a sub tier one to Pingu. Oh, thank you very much, dude. That's 41 subs down the channel. I've missed one as well, so that means I've missed one. Um, so I do apologize if, if I've missed that one. I'm scrolling back to see it now. Um, I can't see it. I do apologize. Whoever else got the other one, congratulations as well. Um, Jay always makes me want to build an ISO board. Oh, Ham, just do it. Nah, it only do only build whatever you're comfortable with, man. You want the board to work for you, not just because it's what someone else does. Um, that's that's always the way I would tell people to go. Uh, I think 205G is zero is a good loop for skies. Yes, as long as you don't do the front legs of the stem with it, because you will lose all the tactility if you do that. Or not all of it, but you'll lose a significant amount of it. Um, uh, 3203 as well, yeah, as Ham Kenobi says, is really good as well. Um, he's wearing his down on the ISO thing. That being said, if you're in the US, don't reverse lanes. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah, as, as I say, don't build something just because I build it, guys. Build it because it's what you want. The whole point of this hobby is that we can have boards that give us the layout that we want, that can give us the functionality that we want, and building your board to someone else's specification might not be what you want. So my advice would be always to build what you want and what works for you. Uh, try ISO, try ANSI, try ortho, try whatever layout you want. Uh, if it works for you, that's fantastic and that's what I want to see and that's what makes me happy in this hobby. People getting the boards that they want. Okay guys, so what we're going to do now is we're going to quickly solder all of this together. Um, as soon as we've done that, we can then start to just check that stabilizer. Um, once we've done that, we can then start to put the board together and take a look at how it fits and feels, put some keycaps on it and do a quick sound test. Then from there, we'll jump into building the ocelot and then we'll jump into doing the T1 sound test and then we'll do the giveaway right at the end of the stream. There we go. Okay, so let's crack on with this. My, I've been talking that long, my solar around has gone to sleep twice. Okay, it's back up to temperature now. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna pin some switches in the corners. And that way we know we've got everything nice and tight. Okay. We are getting there now, guys. Getting there now. That's it. Okay, so that's those done there. I'm just going to pin one in the middle as well, or towards the middle of the board. I'm just going to have one last check that everything is nice and level. Make sure I'm really happy with all of that. Yep. Okay. It's all looking good. Okay. So now we're going to solder uh, on properly. I'm just going to go row by row as quickly as I can, but nice and smoothly at the same time. Double checking before I solder each switch that both pins are showing through. I think they are. I uh, don't think any pins have got bent while I've been putting the switches in. So I think we're good on that front. And Pingo, I have to say, if you hand soldered this board, man, you've done a fantastic job of getting all these diodes and everything in. I struggle with SMB soldering like you wouldn't believe. So to see someone be able to solder a board together with this kind of skill uh, is actually pretty worrying. Um, makes me wonder who's going to call me out on my skill. Although I think I'm alright. I'm alright. Okay, get in there now for this row. Then once we've done this row we'll just quickly move down and keep going as fast as we can. Okay, so that's row one done. Uh, 
Nice plate there, Tez. Uh, yeah, Tez's tongue did help me with the design of the J01. That's why it's got his nice little logo on my plate. Uh, absolutely. Um, our swappable dactyl is almost done. About to be crushing the game at work. Oh man, that's really cool. Uh, I've almost worked up the courage after weeks uh, of asking Jay to ask a question I need an answer to. What hair product does he use? In my hair right now is nothing. Uh, this is straight out of the shower earlier on today, this afternoon. Um, nothing is in my hair right now. There's no product at all. Um, yeah, that's it. Just no product. Nothing. Um, I sometimes use a tiny little bit of wax, but yeah. There you go. <laughs> I use 205 grade zero in my hair. Uh, yeah, the Krellbit version, not the uh, Store Uni version. I don't know. Interestingly, on the Store Uni versus Krellbit stuff, um, Store Uni have actually got a new grade of Crytox coming out. They've got 205 grade S0 or 0S. I can't remember which way around it is. Um, but they're going to send me. So they've sent me uh, that in the post. It should be here in the next week or so. Um, I'm tempted, to, I'm, well, I'm really tempted to try it out on the build, uh, see how it feels. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm interested, to, interested to see what it's like. Um, nothing. <laughs> yeah, uh, it, it's true. That's it. Uh, SMD soldering just takes time, flux, and steady hands. Yeah, it does. And I wouldn't use flux for this sort of build, but you're right. You're doing SMD. I absolutely would. Uh, Pingu salvage my YD60 BLE. They fucked up one of the legs on the MCU. Oh man, I'm glad he could fix it though. I'm really glad. Uh, looking mighty clean. Oh, thanks, man. Yeah, I did go to the barbers the other day as well, so that might help. Um, you're like one of those supermodels that claims no makeup. No, not at all. I'm chubby and fat and uh, yeah, <laughs> my hair may be uh, the best part of my uh, my personal grooming regime. Okay, let's carry on with this board. Try and get this done as quickly as we can. Okay. So as soon as we've built this guys, I am going to put the uh, keycaps on and get the board all screwed together nice and neatly. Um, as I say, we are going to go with Sky Dolch today, which does seem to be my go-to test set recently. And I think that's because it's the only GMK set I've got that doesn't have a tray for it. Um, so it sits in a bag and that bag sits in the drawer, which is right at the side of me now. So I think that what happens is I just need a key set and that's the first one that comes to hand. Um, but it is a good key set, and it's a classic looking key set as well. Okay. I think these switches might have been desoldered before Pingu. I can confirm if they have, because um, some of these have got a different solder on. I can see it's flowing down a different color. some of them. There we go. Okay. I'm making good progress here now. At least I'm not slow as I was a few weeks ago, just before Christmas, when I was having problems with my elbow. Um, I've got a pin in my elbow from an accident when I was younger, and sometimes I just get really stiff elbow and I struggle to move this arm. Um, luckily, that's all healed up now, and whatever was causing it has gone away. I suspect it might just be when I get it cold. Or eat a terrible diet for a couple of weeks. That's what causes it. Okay. Almost there now, guys. We're well over the halfway mark. <coughs> They've been broken in before lubing. Yes, perfect. I thought they had. Um, cool. I completely and thoroughly approve of breaking in switches before lubing where you can. Okay, I'm 
I'm just going to finish off these macro columns before I do the rest of the board. And then that's all done. Don't need to worry about that anymore. Okay, let's carry on with the rest of the board now. Just two more rows to go, guys. The last row should be relatively quick, uh, given it's a space bar row and it's wing keyless, so there's very few keys on there to solder. And the other thing we can do with this build as well today, guys, because I'm using the Sky Dolch key set, we can actually go. Uh, I think we can go with the row uh, five bottom row. So this is our five keys that GMK don't produce very often. I think Sky Dolch and GMK Carbon are the only two sets that had row five in them um, in modern times. Um, but traditionally, there were more sets that had that. Okay. We are definitely making good progress now. Almost done with this row, and then onto the final row, which should be the fastest row of all to do. Okay. Okay, there we go. That is the board fully soldered together. I'm just going to check all the switches, make sure everything looks okay. There you go, you can see. And I've done a fairly neat job of that today. Not that I don't usually, but there we go. Uh, just looking through, everything looks okay. Nothing is missed from a solder point. There's nothing uh, bubbled up or looking untoward with any of those. Okay, I think we are all good. Okay guys, look, there we go, let's get the case ready and then we can screw this together. That the way. Okay, so as I mentioned before, this is a uh, sandwich mount case. It all fits together nicely. There you go guys, you can see what this is going to look like once it's all put together in a minute. That black plate is really doing nothing but the contrast on this camera. There we go. Let's uh, just quickly flip this over and then we can start to screw it together. In before it doesn't fit together. I think we'll be all good, don't worry. So what we're going to do guys is we're going to tighten this one up just a little bit, not too tight, just finger tight and that allows us a bit of play and movement with it. We're going to come diametrically opposed across to the other side of the board, line up the edges nice and neatly on this side using your fingers as a guide. Make sure that one's all screwed in nice and tight. Check that those two edges are even, come back to these two, check that they're even there and then tighten up this side as well. And that puts the board together nicely. And then what we're gonna do is just go diametrically opposed again for the last ones. Over here and over here. And that should get your case nice and neatly aligned, which can sometimes be one of the big bugbears of doing cases like this. still going diametrically opposed. That way we're only putting stress across the longest lines of the case whilst we're tightening them up. If you go around in a circle, you sometimes tend to find that you're putting too much undue stress on uh, individual components. So I would always try and go diametrically opposed where you can. And these ones you just want to go, just so you feel too much resistance. You don't want to over tighten them and start bending stuff but just until you feel a nice amount of resistance. There you go. So there we go guys, that's the board all put together. Um, there is a slight lip on this back edge that you can just see there that's been highlighted, uh, but it is completely flush on the front. Um, so there's no, nothing on the front there. I'm assuming that's just a manufacturing tolerance. Um, you can see on the side profile, everything's nice and flush on the side just here. 
Same on the other side, nice and flush. It's just on this back piece there, finger, I think. And it's only in the middle, it, it's flush here. It starts about here, which runs to about here, and then it's flush again there. So there's a, a section maybe four inches, just where it's uh, slightly not quite there. Uh, but other than that, that's all put together, which looks really good. This black plate is causing the contrast on my camera, something chronic. There we go, let's get in the light. There you go. Yeah, I agree, uh, Pona. The layout is very questionable. It's kind of like, why? But hey ho, there we go. So let's get some caps on this board now. Let's say we are going to go with uh, Jim K. Sky Dolch. Apologise for the noise it's going to make. I'm just going to tip these out. Okay. Let's go with the seven new space bar. any of those shifts. Let's sort these through these keycaps, see what we don't need. Um, we shouldn't need any of those. We shouldn't need an arrow key. Uh, we'll need the Q. Okay. Don't need the UK keys because this is an uh, ANSI layout board. Uh, we're going to use a different bottom row. That's the shift key for that. Don't need any of these HHKBs. Uh, this will be the longest part. Don't need 12 because we're only going to 10 on the F rows. Uh, backspace. There we go. Uh, caps lock, we went step, so we don't need the caps lock. Uh, row 0 alt. So we're going to pop that in there. Uh, sorry, row 5 alt, sorry, should I say. And sort through these keys as quickly as I can. A lot of these keys we don't need, so I'm just going to skip past them. There we go. Uh, F9. Step caps. Okay, we are getting there guys, this is always going to be the longest part of the uh, build, that's one size control. I didn't ask you as well, Pinga, do you want the numbers counting down the board or do you want them counting up? But too late, we're counting down now. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. many keycaps. I should have sorted these out before guys. I do apologize. Don't need 11. I'm gonna get the tab in. Okay. Let's get some keycaps on. Three, four, five, six. Uh, ZX, C, V, B, N. There we go. Okay. 
find the rest of the keys now guys then we'll catch up with chat and then we'll do a bit of a sound typing test so do let me know what you think of its looks so far Says control is the wrong row control. Is the enter key okay? Always the longest part of any build is getting all of the key caps on. Uh, no, that's right. Making good progress now, though, guys. It's starting to look like a full keyboard. Oh, I've used the wrong control key there. Uh, let's just grab this out. The reason why I say I've used the wrong control key is just to show you we're using the R. Uh, five keycaps, which is this one here. Uh, I put this one on the board, which is clearly the wrong row. Okay. But we are almost done now. Second alt key. We're going with the scooped keycaps for there. Don't write it there before. Okay, we've got the plus, and then we just need the last key for F8. There it is. There we go. Okay, let's just move these out of the way, guys. So there we go. That's the board all fully picked up. So let me know what you think. Um, no, I didn't miss the joke, Pona. Um, I, I, I meant I knew you were doing your board. I didn't miss the joke. I knew it. Um, I was just being that typical Brit humour where I agree with it um, and did the whole straight face thing. But clearly that went over too well um, or terribly well. Um, so there we go. Let's catch up with chat uh, while you guys admire this beast of a board. Uh, da, 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 da. Is that ISO? What the fuck? It's not for me. So um, yeah, it, it's it's Pingu's board. It's not mine. Uh, so he wants it this layout. If I do buy one, which I intend to do when he runs a group buy, I'll be building mine with ISO. Um, yeah, didn't miss the joke. Yeah, who's crazy enough to use a fancy? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, as Pingu says, the board supports ISO, but this particular plate doesn't. The plan is to open source plates for the group by so people can buy a dedicated ISO plate. There you go. Um, <coughs> uh, opponent, conceptually, I like the layout, but one doesn't use a keyboard conceptually. I'd be tripping over those left hand columns. Um, so I think the joke talisman is that Pone has designed the board with very similar layout, um, and he was memeing on that, and I was memeing on that as well. So that's, that's it. Um, columns on the right are taken from the IBM FXT, hence why the board is called the 60XT indeed. I should have mentioned that right up front at the beginning of the stream. Um, Jantik as well, hey man, I've not seen you before. Uh, he says you get used to being on the side, I had a few key keyboards with them. Yeah, I've got them on the JER Mini, I've also got them on the VEA, which you can see just up here, uh, and a couple of other boards as well, including my board, the J01. Um, what else? Are we talking about guys? Uh, this is quite interesting. Mechanical keyboards for hipsters. Um, not mechanical keyboards for hipsters. Just really custom keyboards. Something that's really customizable. Make it your own. Um, do it how you want it. It's as simple as it is, man. Uh, this is quite interesting. Yeah. Uh, didn't mean anything. But I was just agreeing with you on the lay layout. Yeah. It was. It was all a bit of a, a silly joke. 
Um, Blending says you could wait and see what I came up with case wise for my board. That sounds like it's uh, interesting. Brit humour, nice joke. Oof. <laughs> Want to hear a joke? Zeno. <laughs> Uh, okay, guys. Uh, Talisman Solutions says, for example, I'd like to share this promote and perhaps even financially support Holy Pandas aren't great projects, but I'm not sure what that is yet. Who knows? I'm sure he's got a couple in his in his head. Um, and he's good though. I don't know why people use ISO with the loss of the slash key. You don't lose it. So if you look at uh, an ISO keyboard, which is mine, you have it here instead of here. Um, so you don't lose it. ISO actually has, uh, if you took this portion of the board, um, and you translate it onto here, ISR actually has one extra key. Uh, and the reason for that is because whilst you have two, you have two switches here, and you have two switches there, on here you have one switch and two switches. So you have three here uh, and four here. Um, so you actually get an extra key on ISR. So just to clear that one up, um, you don't lose a key at all. Uh, how long does it take to learn the layouts when you guys switch to something like this uh, as a touch typist, which I'm sure you guys are, would throw me off a little bit. Okay, so I can touch type, but I don't have true typing technique, uh, but I just love different feels of uh, key switches. Uh, so translating to this board would be absolutely fine, apart from it's not got the ISO into key for me. Uh, so in terms of the alphas, I would be fine. Um, I would struggle here on the shift key because I'm used to split shift key, so I'm used to pipe being here and shift being there. Um, whereas here, the whole thing is shift, so I would struggle a little bit with that. I'd probably end up hitting it too much to this side. Um, same with the shift key, I'm used to having a split shift as well. Um, I tend to use FN key here for my layers and have functions there, and then just the shift there. But I only ever use right shift when I'm doing a uh, question mark anyway, so that's the literally the only time I use it. Uh, the bottom row I'd be completely fine with. I like a wing keyless layout. Uh, that's a really good layout for me, um, so I'm really comfortable with that. It tends to be my pinky resting points when I'm using a board like this, uh, and from there I'll launch it into actual typing. Um, so yeah. So there we go. Uh, and Talisman Solutions with five more tier one subs. Oh man, dude, you are absolutely knocking it out. So Mazebel Genius, X Bash, uh, SNTX, Sleepiness95, and Hints as well. Congratulations, guys. Thank you very much, Talisman. I really appreciate that, dude. Really appreciate it. Um, <laughs> Holy Panda says, I love money and memes. Uh, and 159 says, he's found you a sugar daddy. There you go. There you go. Uh, what else are we talking about? Holy Panda's aren't great. Uh, he will stream, and then you can support him. I've already sent you a keyboard, and you haven't, uh, you haven't done it. So there you go. Um, Odin says, uh, I love ISO enter and anti left shift. Uh, so I actually have a board which is just this vertical one here, uh, which I think you can see. That's actually got that layout on it. So it's got a full shift key here, but it's got the ISO enter uh, and then it's got the, the hash key there. Um, I'm fine with that board. I don't use it as much as I should, um, but yeah. Uh, Talisman, top partner by the summer. That's the plan, man. That's the plan. Got to get that partner status. Um, so there we go. Anyway, so this is the board done. I'm going to pause the music now because the next thing I want to do is just give you a bit of a, a sound typing demo. Um, so this is the 60XT. Let me just move this a little bit closer to the microphone. This is a 60XT uh, with uh, lubed uh, retail blacks. Uh, 68 grams with 3 to or 4 lube on the switches. Uh, designed by Pingu with GMK keycaps. There we go, guys. Uh, <laughs> thumbs in the West, all ten of them. Yeah, I am all thumbs. My typing is horrible to watch, um, but it suits me. I am trying to, to learn how to do it. Um, it does sound good. Uh, let's just give you a bit of a, a sound profile.
go, guys. What do you think? So there we go. There we go, guys. Uh, Tuxki just stopped by. Hey, man. Good to see you, dude. Uh, fastest ups in the West Ham. Still makes me chuckle. Uh, nice. It sounds really good. Um, I know the mic doesn't pick up everything I hear in the room, um, but it sounds really good. There's no flex in it. It's very firm board, which... I personally like uh, some people don't um, there's very little there's a little bit of case ping but I think that's actually coming from the plate the alley plate but it's only on the stabilized keys I'm wondering if it's the little hollows underneath the, uh, the stabilizers because I don't get it when I hit this one which doesn't have the hollows under there so that's interesting that's something to look at I might try filling those in later on and trying that out um, but the board sounds good. Uh, words per minute, Odin says, I can manage about 65. Um, that's about as best as I can do, but I'm old. Um, I've been typing the way I've been typing for a long time, and I'm probably not going to improve much beyond that. Um, but I'm comfortable with that. Um, 11,000. <laughs> Thanks, Alex, I don't know what that means. Um, Oh, I'll be happy to. I'll even set a high watermark on bits so you can get more contributions to support your long-term objects. Oh, there you go, man. There you go. Um, uh, great board uh, says. Uh, I think that's. I think that's Natty. I think. Um, I always forget with usernames. Uh, soft blanketed sound, but it's still a nice pack. It does, yeah. And I think that's because there's very little room in the case for the sound to develop. So yeah, um, honestly, I think Pingu, you've done a great job on this board. Um, I can't wait for this to get reach group by. The board is hefty as hell, and it's only aluminium. There's no weight on the base. Um, it's a really nice, simple board. It's got the macro keys. The wing keyless is really good touch as well. Uh, multiple layout support with different plates, and just look how neat that uh, USB cutout is. I'm really impressed with that. That's so neat and tidy. Um, it's rare we see those apart from the USB-C boards. So thank you very much for designing that so close. Uh, 500 bits if you break 70. Go, 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 go. Um, yeah, I'm not going to do that uh, today. Um, so yeah, so I do I do think that that ping underneath the, um, underneath the stabs, so it's only on this side. It's not on this side. It's not on the space bar, but that's because that's a silent switch. Um, I'm wondering if it's the little gaps that I showed you on the inside of the case, the little recesses that are just causing that. So uh, what I will do is try off stream, and I'll try filling those in, and Pingo, I'll let you know how that goes. Uh, Mr. Petrov has donated the 500 bits anyway. Oh, thank you very much, dude. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so no worries, Pingo. I don't mind building your boards for you on stream anytime. This was a pleasure to put together. Uh, a really nice, easy build, and uh, I absolutely love it. Um, yeah, it's a great board. And yeah, run the group by soon so I can get one. Uh, sounds like you filled it with some damping material. I know you did not. Uh, awesome. It does sound like that because it's so, it's so close inside. So I showed the guys earlier on, but I don't think there's much of a gap underneath the PCB. I think it's really, really close because there's no. Um, I, I can feel it almost bottoming out when I press it. It's a really solid board. Um, Pingo, I don't know what the tolerances are, if you can tell me, um, but I suspect it might even need a sheet of paper in there just to stop it bottoming out and uh, and causing any shorts on the switches. Um, but yeah, we'll have to have a look at that and, and try it out. So that's that build done. Uh, what we're going to move on to now is we're going to move on to the Ocelot build. So I'm just going to pop this to one side. Just give me a second, guys. And today I'm going to be building the Ocelot with, uh, with Zelio V2 switches which is here. So as you can see, it's got this lovely red velvet shed. Excuse me, I'm so thirsty, guys. Um, so this is the Ocelot. Uh, it is a brick. It is absolutely lovely. Uh, small little macro pad, solid aluminium, integrated player, solid brass base with this lovely Ocelot logo on the bottom as well. There you go, you can see it's even got little recesses to help you pick it up from the side. And then from the back, central USB-C. And there we go. So these are Zelio V2 switches. The plate is integrated, as you can see here. This is all one solid block of aluminium. Uh, and this has been recessed in and milled out. <coughs> um, and then the switches clip in there. So we'll take it apart and I'll show you how that, that works, guys. Let me 
and just find the right screwdriver bit. Okay. So when I did got this, it didn't have the bump ons on it. They came in the packet with it. I had to put them on manually. I've already done that. Uh, not because I've been using it, just because I wanted to have it sat on the desk looking pretty. Okay. Pop the music back on in a second as well, guys. There we go. Uh, this is a content-rich stream. Yeah, lots of stuff going on. Uh, TruthGo24 says, what's your favourite switch of all time um so i really love buckling spring boards uh, i don't even have one anymore but i do love a good buckling spring if you want to talk about mx switches then it's a tie up between zelio v2s uh, and holly pandas depending on whether i want a loud or a quieter board um so my canoe which is somewhere on the wall that's built with holly pandas um, and i've got a couple of other boards built with them as well i absolutely love those switches um, but in terms of uh, just day-to-day -day usage, I think Azealia V2 is probably better for office environments and things like that. If I'm going to go linear, then I like to use tangerine switches, which are what I've got in this board, um, only because I like the colour of them and they're just a standard stock uh, getter on linear, basically. Uh, but once lubed, I think they're just as good as any other linear as well. So there we go. Um, so that's all of those screws undone. I'm just going to take this base plate off. So one of the interesting things to note as well guys is that this has actually got four mount pins here and what that does is that actually helps you align the plate so at this point the plate won't slide off it's kind of if i tipped it upside down it'll fall off but at that kind of angle it won't move it's so tight is the tolerance on this there's no movement on it but it just holds it nicely in place that's the first thing i wanted to show you the second thing is you can see that this is all still one piece of aluminium so you can see just inside there if i can get the light showing on it don't know what's up with the light today. It is literally right above the board. Uh, so you can see it's all been milled out nice and neatly there. The switches just show through. And then we've already looked at this really early on in the stream, but I'm gonna show it again really up nice and neatly and up close. This is the PCB for the Ocelot. So you've got the Ocelot logo here. You've got the Wilbur logo here as well, uh, and the Wilbur Ocelot um, 2018 reference point at the bottom. So it's got this lovely black uh, and copper silk screen on there. It looks fantastic. Um, turning it over, having a look at the other side, it's got this really nice orangey coppery feel to it. So the piece of equipment is absolutely stunning. Um, it's a lovely, lovely bit of equipment. Um, the PCB just slots in here. It says, I haven't actually tried to put this together yet. Oops. the wrong way around. It helped if I put it the right way around, wouldn't it? I'm just going to try and push this in. In fact, we might have to take the switch set for this. Give me one second. Let me just grab an IC extractor. And this is where we're going to have a problem because my IC extractor won't get in. Typical. Okay. Typical boys and girls, we'll get this out. There we go. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to push these switches out from the bottom and then we'll be able to uh, sort it out from there. Or I'm going to hopefully do that. This is where my IC extractor doesn't quite fit in the gaps you see, guys. <laughs> I'm trying to be really gentle here and not damage it. I shouldn't have put the switches in first. So if you do get an Ocelot, guys, just remember, don't put the switches in first. There we go. This is my own fault for mocking this up without trying to make sure that I've got everything in place. You think I'd learn 
but every day is a school day guys every day is a school day There we go. All out, no damage. We get there, we get there. Um, what colour USB-C cable did I get? I got uh, a rose gold PCB cable. Um, USB-C cable, sorry, not PCB. USB-C cable, uh, which is nice. Uh, Bug Whisper says he wants uh, an Ocelot Artisan. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, Straight Class, he's got an Ocelot coming as well. Good man. Aluminium is the word. Uh, yeah, uh, aluminium, aluminium, just different ways of saying the same thing. Uh, will you test switches on this? No, this is going to be a permanent uh, switches in this board. Uh, I'll test switches on the mock up board I've got to the side of me. Uh, Meta Advice says thoughts on the Keybook Nano Slider. I've been considering getting one, but a rotary encoder and a Pro Micro are a cheaper option. I really like the, uh, the Nano Slider. I'm hoping that I can get hold of one. Um, we'll have to see. Uh, Talisman saying, where can you get hold of one of these? The Ocelots are available from Singer Keyboards, uh, so definitely have a look at that. Um, I think there's a couple of them left, or they were earlier on. Please don't scratch my Ocelot. No, these are uh, these are rubber coated. The, the brassy colour that you can see on this is a rubber coating, so there's no risk of me scratching anything. Um, so yeah, um, don't worry, I think about these things. Uh, so we've already got that sorted. Um, Let's, uh, let's pop the PCB in this time, uh, and then we can go from there. Okay. So now we've got that in place. I'm going to pop a switch in at each side. Making sure we line it up nicely. And I'm going to pop one in down here. Go. and then we're just going to pop the rest of these in holding onto the PCB at the bottom pushing up nice and firmly okay and there we go that's all the switches in to the PCB I'm going to quickly solder this together, warm up my soldering iron again. Should just take a couple of minutes to solder this one, it should be nice and quick and simple. And when you're soldering inside a case just be careful not to touch the anodization with your soldering iron. You want to make sure you're keeping that nice and clear and away. I haven't decided if I'm going to use this with uh, keycaps on it or if I'm actually just going to use it as an artisan holder. So I may just put a couple of artisans on it for now uh, and then decide what key set I'm going to use with it later on if that is indeed the way I decide to go. Okay. There we go, all soldered together. all looking nice and neat and tidy then what we're going to do is just pop the base back on that's now nicely neatly on 
Um, what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to change the screws that I use because Elaine did send me some Torx screws to use as well, or I think the Torx or maybe hex. Let's have a look. These are hex screws, so I think I've got one small enough to fit this. Yeah, there we go. going again not over tightening just nice and neat the thing with that uh, Torx is you can easily round them so don't over tighten anything just do it until you meet that natural resistance Let's see if we can find a couple of artisans to just pop on this as well. So there we go guys, that's the ocelot built. USB-C, nice ocelot logo at the bottom, that is absolutely stunning, this brass piece on the bottom is so good, um, I absolutely love it. Okay, so let's just catch up with chat, see what's going on. There's been a lot of talk. Um, uh, Zeno with rose gold, that sounds good. Uh, make sure you use the uh, Top Crack affiliate link if you're going to order a Zeno. Um, looks nice and clean, just wait for the caps on there before I order it. Nice, um, you should definitely order one. I'm just going to pop a couple of artisans on here. Um, I think I've got a few more actually I can pop on. Let's just grab some. Let's just grab some random bags of artisans. Going in no particular order here. The Ocelot is so good, uh, boop, beep, bep. Um, it's such a nice little, uh, little macro pad. I should have another artisan in this plate just here. Nothing over the top artisan wise, just a few of the ones I've got lying around in the drawer, whatever I got to first. But there you go guys, you can see. Try and get them to shine in the light. So there we go. That is the Ocelot build completed. I'm just going to pop that there out of the way. There we go guys, let me know what you think of the Ocelot as a little macro pad with art stands on. Um, it'd be nice if I had all of the same type of art stands on it, but I don't have a collection. Um, let's see what we're talking about. Uh, uh, so are you also getting a nano slider ISO returns? Ooh, yeah, go for it. Um, Rama is also coming out with an M10B according to his TD. Yes, there is a new uh, Rama macro pad coming out. Um, Keybook of T some custom caps for the Nano should have been up by now. Um, yeah, I think I've seen those actually. Uh, and Jim K. Bento has got keycaps for it as well. Uh, Keywork is a subsidiary of Candy Keys, uh, so that should tell you about their reputation, whatever you want to know about them. Um, oh, the Ocelot looks nice, it does, it looks great. Need to get on Insta. Uh, yeah, you do. Yeah, go follow me on Insta as well. <laughs> um, Def getting the Milk M60A, really like Rama 2. Yeah, the Milk M60A looks really good. Uh, Talisman says, I find these number pads are a great way from transitioning from 65% and above to 6% and below. Yeah, that's a really good point, actually. So if you've got a 6% that doesn't have arrow keys, you can use this for your arrow keys, um, and you can add functions on for the other keys if you wanted to. Same as you putting them on a key map, and things like that is a really good way of uh, uh, migrating to a smaller board, as Talisman says. Um, so yeah, there we go. 
what we're going to do now guys is we're going to have a look at the T1 switches so I'm going to talk about them a little bit first um, I'm just going to unplug this and then once I've talked about these we'll, uh, we'll actually come into some sound tests so as I showed you before on here um, we've got a few different switches so we've got a clipped Holly Panda we've got a uh, standard Holly Panda We've got the T1 in the clear housing, so there's these both T1s in the clear housing. So just move this underneath the camera so you can, guys can see a bit better. We've got T1s in the smoky housing, and then we've got Zelio V2s. Uh, now, as I said earlier on, the smoky housing will come with this teal stem uh, from the group buy, uh, and the clear housing comes with the teal stem as well. The stems I've got in here, the, these beige ones, and I've got a yellow one in this one, they are just prototype stems, but they're identical. Um, and I'll show you this again so you can see the clear smokiness, so the translucency of it, uh, just at the back there. I'm just going to focus, try and get some light on it. There you go, you can kind of see that just there. Um, so these switches are all the same, and then we've got a Zelio V2 as well. So what the plan is, is to do a little bit of a sound test of each one. Put the music on pause. Um, do a bit of a sound test of each one, compare the smoky housing to the clear housing, see what you guys think. And then once we've done this, we'll do the giveaway and then we're going to close on the stream. Okay. Uh, Truth Goad says, what is my current favourite switch? As I said before, it's either a Holy Panda or a Zelio V2, uh, depending on whether I want a loud board or a quiet board. Uh, if I want it to go for a linear, then I pick a Tangerine, which is a stock gator on linear, but recoloured uh, to look a little bit different. Um, so that's what I'd pick. Um, what kind of keycap puller is that? I don't know. It came with some board I got. So it's got the wire keycap puller and it's also got the plastic keycap puller with the rubber corners on. Um, I don't know why it came, from, came with something. Um, I don't know. It was just in the collection for some reason. Um, how do I decide what side to use? So what I will tend to do is I'll tend to use the wire side, but if this if it's been particularly tight and the wires are tempted to scratch the sides or something like that, I'll come in and use the plastic one, uh, and that just clips on a little bit tighter and a little bit better. Um, the plastic one is also better for some of the shorter stabilized keys. Uh, sorry, for some of the longer stabilized keys where you can't bend the wire around the whole thing. Um, it just depends on what I'm doing as to what I use. Uh, yep, yeah, uh, they're built very similar, slightly different to how I use it. All doesn't really matter. None of them are going to damage keycaps, the, the modern ones anyway, because they've all got rubber ends on, so you'll be fine with those. So what I'm going to do now, guys, is give you a bit of a, a, a typing demo uh, just to remind you guys what a Holy Panda sounds like and what a Zelio V2 sounds like. Then we'll move on to the T1 switches and we'll see what you guys think. So this is the Zelio V2. This is the Holy Panda. And bear in mind, I am using a wooden board, so the sound isn't re relevant to what you hear in an aluminium case. I'm trying to do this to make it louder and help you hear guys hear some of the inconsistencies. Uh, I'm now going to do the T1 in the smoky housing. And now the T1 housing in the clear housing. So just to go through those, Zelio V2, T1, Holy Panda. I don't know if you guys can hear that, but there is a slight amount of chatteriness, not in terms of its actuation, which I know is slightly a problem, but just in terms of how much noise there comes from the leaf. There is quite a lot of that on the, uh, the T1. So that's what the T1 switches sound like. So just give you a bit of an overview between the uh, smoky housing and the clear housing. I can't hear a difference between these, personally. Uh, just to compare it to a clipped holy panda, so this is normal holy panda. 
So as you can hear, the uh, the clipped holly panda is a lot more muted. Uh, it's not quite as thucky on the bottom out. So comparing that. There you go. So that's a little bit of a sound demo of the T1 switches. Once I get a full batch of them in, I'll rebuild this whole board in T1 and we'll do a proper sound typing test on stream. But there you go, guys. That is that. Okay. So with that, the only last thing to do on the uh, agenda today is the giveaway. So I've got a little bot in the background that tells me who's been active uh, watching the stream, interacting with you guys uh, in the... Uh, in the chat so the only rule I have is you have to have been active within the last five minutes um, and uh, you have to have been chatting that's kind of you know the only the only rule and um, the way to enter is that we're gonna actually play a little game uh, there's gonna be a trivia question and the first person who comes up with the answer uh, in chat will get the prize of the play and I'll sort out with them off stream and we'll get that shipped out to them. so just to remind you guys the prize here is a 60% uh, ANSI plate, which is one of the space hardware plates from uh, uh, keyboardplates.com, which is a partner of uh, LaserBoost. This has got all of the good um, NASA type imagery, imagery at the bottom. Uh, it's a fixed ANSI plate with really good stabilized cutouts designed by Martin, who did the Plane 60. Um, and uh, LaserBoost uh, and key keyboard plates have made this, sent it to me uh, for a giveaway. Um, so it's got all of the kind of space stamps on the back and stuff like that. It is really, really nice. So there we go. And you also get a couple of stickers. So there'll be some keyboardplates.com stickers that come with it. There is a laser boost one knocking around somewhere as well. And you get a couple of laser boost um, postcards as well. So these are all going to be shipped out to the winner. And as I say, we are going to base this on trivia, and I want to basically make sure that you guys are all ready and in chat. So I'm going to give you another couple of minutes, but giveaway is coming, guys. Get ready, because it is going to be fastest finger first when I ask the trivia question, and it's not a difficult question. Um, but yeah, so so we will come up with that. Uh, Bazooka Shoes, just subscribed with Twitch Prime. Thank you very much for that, dude. Really appreciate that as well. Uh, it's not NASA trivia, no. It's, uh, it's a little bit simpler than that. Um, Rules, the rules are literally just, you know, be active. Um, when I ask you the trivia in a few minutes, uh, be the fastest finger first, so whoever can get that into the chat, uh, the answer is first, is, is going to be fine. Uh, Miss Evil if you want one of those postcards, I've got a ton of them, I've got about 100 of them, so I will send you one, that's fine. Um, I'm not going to accept any answers before the time when I actually ask the question. So don't keep trying to guess answers now, but we are going to ask it. So giveaway is coming, guys. Get ready for this. Get ready for this. So this is the plate that you can win. As I say, it's a space hardware plate from keyboardplates.com uh, with all the warning critical space items, the little uh, NASA imagery, of the space shuttle and all that kind of good stuff. Um, I will post it out to you uh, in the next few days. It'll take me about a week to get it to the post office. Um, so you should have it in 10 days or so. It is made of stainless steel, uh, 1.5 millimeters thick. It comes with the little uh, uh, space sticker thing on the back from keeperplace.com, uh, which is quite nice. A little space hardware stamp, all that kind of good stuff as well. So I hope you guys are all ready for the giveaway. Um, the question is that I want you to answer, and it's fastest finger first, remember, so it's first person to type up um, the answer into the uh, into the chat and, and post it on there. It has to be the full answer, um, not just a partial answer or anything like that. Uh, we'll get the plates sent out to them. Uh, these plates are available on keyboardplates.com as well if you want to go buy one, but that's entirely up to you. But I do recommend checking this out because I have got a lot of cool stuff and they're going to have more cool stuff in the future. <coughs> okay, um, I think it's 50 euros, I think, truth good. I'm not 100% certain, I haven't looked at the price. Um, okay guys, I'm going to ask the question in just one minute, and as I say, it's the first person to come up with the answer. But the question is, what, there we go, I was going to tease you, uh, but what um, keycap set is this, including the type of keycap set? What keycap set is this here, including the type of keycap set? There we go, that's the question. So first person to get the answer. It's not Alchemy, no, uh, it's not 
Dev TTY, uh, a couple of answers coming through. It's not DSA Milkshake, it's not GMK, it's not Muted, it's not Alchemy, it's not MT3 Dev TTY. <laughs> Jessica Mood Ring, <laughs> that's a great answer. It's not Jessica Mood Ring, it's not DSA Your Mum. Uh, uh, okay, 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 okay. I'm going to scroll back up. I'm going to scroll up because I think I've seen the answer. So the answer is that this is DSA Bounty Hunter. This is the name of the set. Uh, you might remember it from a couple of weeks ago. It was on stream because I put it on my pearl. Um, so let's have a look and see who was the first person to guess DSA Bounty Hunter. Now I know that the post uh, was 40% keyboards. That was the last post I saw before I asked the question. So let's go down from there. So the first guess was DSA Alchemy, that's incorrect. The second was MT3 Dev TTY, that's incorrect. The first correct answer is C Ruto NTV, and I apologize if I'm messing your name up there. Um, but yeah, I'm just gonna call you C Ruto. Um, you are the winner of the plate, dude. Uh, if you want to reach out to me on um, on Discord, if you wanna go join the Top Pack Discord, if you're not already on there, if you just wanna send me a message, uh, or if you want to whisper to me on Twitch, in fact I'm not logged into Twitch, I'm in, only in OBS so I won't see it. Uh, but yeah, if you want to reach out to me on the Top Clack Discord, uh, or if you want to go and, and email me at, to topclack at gmail.com, um, then I will absolutely make sure I get this out to you, but congratulations and well done dude, I'll ship this out to you in the next week or so. So there we go. I'm going to catch up with chat now, a lot of people going on. DSA camping, no. There were some good guesses though. A um, couple of people said DSA Bounty Hunter, um, Bazooka Shoes got it right as well but you were just a fraction too late, um, Subnet also got the right answer just a fraction too late, Bug Whisper as well, um, <laughs> you passed with DSA Yellow, Green and Beige. Um, okay, yeah, so congrats to uh, C Ruto, yeah. Rigged, yeah, Thockbot, yeah, absolutely. Not even a sub, well it's open to anyone, I did say it was up to the first person to get it, it didn't matter if you were... Um, uh, subbed or not, you know, Purple Chat, they have its own giveaways that might be separate, so that might be a hint to people to sub. Um, Chuck Shim says congrats, 159 says GG, uh, lots of people congratulating him uh, or her. Uh, Talisman says bravo, <laughs> damn had no idea. Yeah, it's one of those things, it's either you know or don't know, but it was the best question I had. Uh, <laughs> C Ruto is my bot, so just send it to me now. No, what's DSA? <laughs> what's that? Here? Yeah, Bazooka Shoes, you were just, just out. Just out. Um, best rule, what, what secret chat? I don't know anything about secret chat. Sorry, man. Um, I saw the answer before I even started typing on the phone. Oh, oh, well, man. Oh, well. The eternally teased and never delivered purple chat giveaway. Maybe, maybe. Um, so, yeah, do reach out to me at C Ruto, or if anyone knows how to reach out to him, um, I, I want him to. Uh, to do that, eat that suckers and yes boy. Um, in fact, I'm gonna send you an, an ad friend and then I can get hold of you because I'm not sure if you are, um, uh, if you are in uh, in the top pack Discord or not. Uh, anyway, but do reach out to me. Uh, just spam DSA banner on all channels on Twitch. Yeah, that's that's how you do it. I find you on Discord. Yeah, just go to the the top pack Discord man. Um, you can't miss me. I'm right at the top of the list with Brian. Just tap on J and then send it across uh, and I'll get in touch with you that way. Perfect. Okay guys, um, so if there isn't any questions, um, which there hasn't been many of because we're doing the giveaway, then I will be closing the stream down in a couple of minutes. So if you haven't got any questions, now's the time to ask them. I've got about 10 minutes uh, before I have to close down the stream anyway, so if there is any questions, we'll do that. Um, in terms of upcoming content, next week uh, is uh, Top Crack again on Thursday, so I'll be there with Brian doing the standard show. We have got a bit of technical difficulty in that. Um, the software we used to use was Skype for him to get my video and audio and it looks like Skype no longer wants to play with Streamlabs OBS so if anyone has got a good way of sharing a second video uh, chat onto a stream please do let me know <coughs> um, sub oh you're dead to us all yeah uh, oh, tell us about solution getting the thanks for the subs as well there who do I have winning the Super Bowl uh, tell me the teams that are in it and I will I will do that um, uh, thanks for the stream. Yeah, no problem, man. No problem. Um, yeah, tell tell me the, the teams that are in it, and I'll pick one, and then we'll see if I'm right. Um, 
how will the possible Brexit impact top flight? Well, Brexit's happening as far as the government's concerned in the UK, um, but it won't impact top flight as far as I can tell. Uh, it might impact my spending or it might not in terms of keyboard content, but you know, I'll work around that and I'll still be there on the show each week. I'll still be doing giveaways where we can. We'll still be having those conversations. I'll still be part of Top Clack. That's not going to change at all. I'm probably going to start doing a lot more written content as well. Um, so yeah, so we'll see how that goes. Um, Jay will make Brexit not happen easy. I wish I could. I wish I could. Uh, oh, Talisman, excellent job. Thank you, man. I appreciate that. I really do appreciate it. Patriots and Rams. It's got to be the Patriots. Uh, Patriots and Rams. I'm going to pick the Patriots. Um, Duxie says you mentioned the leaf of the T1 is it bad does it need loop honestly I don't think they feel bad they do sound a little bit different I don't know if you can hear that it's kind of like almost got a little extra tap to it um, but I do really like the switches they're very tactile I haven't added any loops to them as yet when I get a full board I will be lubing them um, and I'll be changing the spring as well because I'm not a fan of the spring but then again I don't like the spring in Zelios either and I do change the spring in them as well so once I do full, full build, hopefully it'll be my exempt, which should be not next weekend, but the weekend after. Um, we'll go from there. Next weekend, I'm hoping it's going to be the J01, which is my board. Everything's here now, apart from the gaskets and the case itself. The case itself is on a plane somewhere at the minute as we speak. Um, hopefully it'll be here for the time, showing time for Thursday next week, so I can show off a little bit there. And then hopefully the gaskets will be here as well, and I can show the whole build off this time next week on the Sunday show. If not, then I do have another build lined up, and we'll start to talk about that in the middle of the week. Uh, and I think I've also got a number 160 as well coming from uh, Tronics to build as well. So I can't wait to, to, to build that on stream. Uh, and then I've got a couple of duck boards, which are mine. The Xen, as I said, um, potentially a couple of Luminas coming in, uh, if Ted actually ever ships them. Um, and whatever else I buy in the meantime. There's loads of content coming from a build's perspective. Um, the Monkees versus the Beatles, Jay. Yeah. <laughs> Beatles all the time. Have I ordered DSA Ferris? No, not yet, but I'm going to order it this weekend. I'm going to get the Hyper 7 set, so I'll have two Hyper 7s. I've actually got one board here that needs a case building for it, and I've got the original one, which is on the top shelf just out of view here, which doesn't have switches in it, but I'm going to re-put some switches in that and put the DSA Ferris version on that one. So I have two Hyper 7s that are fully built with keycaps at that point. Um, which NFL team is moving to London? God knows, no idea. As a resident of Boston, screw the Patriots. No, oh, I'm sorry, man, I picked the wrong one. Uh, what weight spring? Uh, my favourite weight spring is 78 grams. That's the one I'll be using for most builds because that's what I like. Uh, went the Brits against the Patriots last time, you know, in T Pipe. <laughs> yeah, J01. What? Um, yeah, so I'm not running a group buy, no, I'm just doing a board for myself, which is the J01. This is the layout. Uh, there may be a small, if I get the way around, this is the layout. There may be a small private group buy later on for a second round of prototypes, depending on how well the first one turns out and how many tweaks and changes I need to make. Um, there will be an ANSI fixed plate or an ISO fixed plate if I do offer that and there'll be a couple of options on the bottom row rather than this solid same option um, but that'll all be bespoke if I do want it so um, if anyone does want to see that ping me on discord or check out my Instagram I posted some pictures of the board on Instagram um, but ping me on discord I'm happy to share some pictures if anyone wants to see it uh, anyone ordered pink Helios no not yet but I will be doing and if you are going to order from some please consider using the uh, the top pack affiliate link um, so you can get that from our Discord server. You can just hit the top bar; it's up there in the uh, in the pinned items. Uh, so uh, feel free to have a look at that. Um, Upas says, "Where did I get the J01 made?" Oh, well, if the quality is good, mate, I'll uh, I'm I'm happy to put you in touch with the menu. Uh, absolutely happy, uh, especially for something like the Satisfaction 75. But it is the same place that the ANZI and a couple of other boards have been made as well. So I am fairly confident on the quality. Uh, Jay, I like private parties. Well, hello. Um, there's no private party yet we'll see how it goes we'll see how it goes let me get the prototype built and then we'll, I'll think about how, how the future of the J01 is um, have you seen GMK Mizu and what are your thoughts okay so I like the colorway I hope it stays away from the uh, Hero Gardener sub legends because I'm not a fan of those if it stays away from them and it stays the color as it is and it keeps the kits that are in the base kit I'm all over it simple as that all over it um Thanks, good point. I could use milkshake fruits. Nice. Oh, and Talisman Solutions with uh, 47 gift subs now, giving one to Tuxkey as well. Oh, it's Tuxkey's lucky day. Thank you very much, Talisman. I really appreciate that, dude. Really appreciate it. Okay, so I think that's it. We've caught up on the questions. I'm losing my voice now. Um, 
So I'm going to go, I'm going to close the stream down. Um, see Ruto, I'm going to get this out to you in the next week or so. Um, if you just reach out to me on Discord, we will sort that out. Um, and yeah, thank you very much for watching, guys. Um, and I hope to see you again soon. But yeah, take care, guys. I'll speak to you on Thursday, and you can hit me on the Discord. See ya.